All right, so here's the video for lesson number 11. Uh, so for the homework assignment here, you have to go through and determine all of the solutions uh, for the given equation. Some of them are factored partially, some of them are not factored at all. So let's take a look at the first one. So for the first question here, it's completely factored. So all we have to do is set each part equal to zero. So x minus five equals zero, which gives us x equals five. That's an easy one to solve. 3x plus 2 equals 0 if I subtract 2 and divide by 3, I get x equals negative 2 thirds. And I have x plus 3 equals 0, that's another easy one, x equals negative 3. So my solution set is going to be negative 3, negative 2 thirds, and positive 5. For the second one, it's partially factored. There are still uh, two terms here that can be factored. So 4x squared minus 9 becomes 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. x squared minus 16 becomes x plus 4 and x minus 4, which is equal to 0. If I go through and set each one of those equal to zero, 2x plus 3 equals zero. If I subtract 3 and divide by 2, I get x equals negative 3 halves. Well, if 2x plus 3 makes negative 3 halves, I'm going to assume 2x minus 3 makes positive 3 halves. X plus 4 equals 0 gives me negative 4, and X minus 4 equals 0 gives me positive 4. So for this um, equation, I wind up having four solutions. So I have negative 4, negative 3 halves, positive 3 halves, and positive 4. For the next two, I have to factor first. So looking at that first expression, I see there is a GCF of 3x, leaving me with 2x squared minus 9x minus 5 equals 0. I need to use the AC method here. So I have to say, well, that multiplies to make negative 10. So then I'm asking myself what multiplies to make negative 10 but adds to make negative 9. So I would make that <clears throat> negative 10 x plus x minus 5. If I factor that, I have GCF of 2x giving me x minus 5, positive 1, x minus 5. So my factors are 3x, x minus 5, and 2x plus 1. If I set each part there equal to 0, 3x equals 0, x minus 5 equals 0, and 2x plus 1 equals 0, I get three solutions, x equals 0, x equals 5, and x equals negative 1 half. So then my solution set would be negative 1 half, 0, and 5. For the next one, if you notice, it's not equal to zero. That's a problem. So our first step is subtract 12. So I have x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals zero. I then can go through and um, <clears throat> do grouping here. So if I do grouping here, whoops, I wind up having x squared, that's going to give me x plus 3, negative 4, x plus 3, all still equals 0, so that's x plus 3, and x squared minus 4. x squared minus 4 still can be factored, so I have x plus 3, x plus 2, x minus 2. Each one can be equal to 0, so I have x equals negative 3 negative 2, and positive 2. So my solution set is negative 3, negative 2, and positive 2. All right, um, moving right along here. 
we have uh, the next equation. So this is just a harder question just because there's more factoring. It says to determine all real zeros. To determine the zeros, what that tells us to do is to make this P of X set this equal to zero. So I'm going to say zero equals x plus 4, x minus 4. That's how I would factor that. Here, I'd have x squared and x plus 4, negative 16 and x plus 4. So I'd wind up having x plus 4, x squared minus 16. Well, x squared minus 16 can still be factored. So I'd have x plus 4 x minus 4, x plus 4, x plus 4 again, and x minus 4. <clears throat> now before I start to solve, I just want to kind of simplify this, make it look a little nicer. So x plus 4, I saw 1, 2, 3 times, so that's to the third power. x minus 4, I saw twice, so that's to the second power. So if I solve this, x plus 4 equals 0, I have x equals negative 4. x minus 4 equals 0, so x equals positive 4. So when I show my solution set, I have a negative 4 and a positive 4, but the negative 4 has a multiplicity of 3, and the positive 4 has a multiplicity of 2. That's just telling whoever's grading your question that that solution comes up 3 times or 2 times. Number three is really the type of question we want to be able to answer from this lesson. If we could get this, this is really like Regents level, this is what we want. So it says that we know that there's a factor of this expression of x plus 2, so we want to divide this out. Now, depending on if you're an accelerated or not, if you're an accelerated student, you probably did this using something called synthetic division. Those of you that are non-accelerated, you just don't know what that is, and that's totally fine. You'll get that next year in pre-calc. So I'm going to do it without synthetic division, right? Again, if you're an accelerated student, hopefully you're able to get it with that. It's a little bit easier. Um, so let's go through and do some division. So if I do some long division, x plus 2, this is 4x cubed plus 12x squared plus 5x minus 6. So I need to put 4x squared up here, 4x cubed plus 8x squared. These cancel, that becomes subtraction, so this is going to become 4x squared plus 5x, um, I can even bring down a minus 6. What multiplies to make 4x squared is plus 4x, so that would be 4x squared plus 8x, so that becomes negative 3x minus 6. It's negative because we're subtracting the terms, right? The 4x is cancel. And then 5x minus 8x becomes negative 3x. So then this would become minus 3. So minus 3x minus 6. Both of those are the same, so no remainder. So what that tells us is that P of x, instead of being this polynomial that they give us, can actually be written as x plus 2 times 4x squared plus 4x minus 3. <clears throat> Now I have some factoring to do. So again, with that polynomial, I have a AC method, so negative 12. What multiplies to make negative 12 to adds to make 4? Well, that tells me that P of X is equal to X plus 2 times, we'll say 4X squared plus 6X minus 2X minus 3. This has a GCF of 2x, leaving me with 2x my, uh, plus 3. GCF of negative 1, so 2x plus 3. So P of x, in factored form, would be x plus 2, 2x plus 3, and 2x minus 1. Now this doesn't ask us to put it in factored form. It asks us to determine the zeros. So to determine the zeros or the solutions, we have to set this equation equal to zero. I know to do that because of the last sentence. The last sentence tells us when is P of X zero. So now if I set each one of those three equal to zero, X plus two equals zero, 
2x plus 3 equals 0 and 2x minus 1 equals 0. All three of those generate a solution. So I have x equals negative 2, x equals negative 3 halves, and x equals positive 1 half. If you're not sure where I'm getting those fractional answers, just do some simple algebra and you'll get the answer. So that tells us that this is x equals negative 2, negative 3 halves, and positive 1 half. Eventually, in future lessons, this, uh, these solutions will help us sketch this function. Right? It doesn't ask us to do that, so we don't have to. Right? But we do know a lot about this function just from those solutions and actually this first term. This first term tells us a ton. We'll see that in the next few lessons. Other than that, we're all set. That's the homework assignment. Hopefully this video is helping you. Uh, if you're still struggling, please come and see me for extra help. Hopefully you're enjoying the weekend.